Can you believe this joint? And it's all free, courtesy of Sri Lankan Airlines. <laughs> there was some bad weather this morning and our flight got canceled. So they put us up in a five-star hotel. It's just unbelievable. Anyway, I'm here to tell you something about consciousness. And the reason is that, you know, this whole series has been about how to use consciousness or how to master consciousness to, uh, again, going right back to the most fundamental idea in our whole channel, uh, becoming. What? You want to become something greater than you are. And the way you do it is by mastering consciousness. Now, consciousness is the most fundamental thing in the world. If you understand consciousness, you can understand all of yoga. You can understand all of religion. Everything, science, politics, economics, whatever, fits with plenty of room to spare in the model of consciousness, in the context of consciousness, because consciousness is the absolute. So everything comes under consciousness. See? So, so the four levels of consciousness, or the four types of consciousness, are, once again, jagrat, meaning external consciousness of the physical world through the senses, svapna, which means dream consciousness, mental consciousness, sushupti, which means deep sleep, and turiya. Turiya simply means the fourth, because it's indescribable. But it has been called ajata, meaning seeing the material world as unborn like it never was. That's the state of enlightenment. That's nirvana or nibbana. That's what we're aiming for in spiritual life, is to realize this turiya. And once we do, it's like game over. You know, you win. So, okay. Waking consciousness is what we're all used to thinking of as consciousness. But it's not, really, <laughs> because it's conditioned. How is it conditioned? Well, it's conditioned by the body. It's conditioned by the senses, by the environment, by the context, the verbal context, and so on, that you exist within. Your identity, or your idea of who and what you are, and so on. Then... Dream consciousness is also conditioned consciousness. It's consciousness of the mind, consciousness of thoughts, dreams. Now, most people think that they're in dream consciousness only when they're asleep. But this is not true. Because what is thinking? Whether you're a linear verbal thinker that has a little voice inside your head that you have a conversation with yourself, or you're a deeper holistic thinking or holographic thinker, multidimensional thinker, um, beyond words even, uh, there's different types of thinking, which is why the Buddha called his highest meditation themeless concentration. There's no theme. There is no context because you've reached the absolute. So dream consciousness can go quite a ways. Uh, it can cover our waking consciousness even while we're awake. For example, when reading a book, reading a good story, you are visualizing the characters in the action in your mind, aren't you? And what is that? Well, we call it 
thinking because we're awake, but it's actually dreaming. What's the difference, you know, between <laughs> reading a story or um, watching a, no a, a novel that's being brought to life in a movie and thinking, oh, I know what's going to happen and what the characters are going to say and so on like that. Dreaming. So we dream along with waking consciousness. And in fact, this is the state that most human beings are in most of the time. <clears throat> then, when waking consciousness is covered by sushupti, by ignorance, by emptiness or nothingness, then we go into what is commonly called dreaming sleep, where we have all kinds of mental fantasies about this and that. It's really just the mind kind of processing the day's thoughts, but this comes in very important when we consider God GPT and how that all works. Because what happens, the day's impressions are not fully digested. That's why we dream. That's why we dream in between waking consciousness and deep sleep. Because the mind has to set these things in order. It has to put them in its uh, tree-structured database. Okay, for those of you who know a little bit about computers, that the mind maintains uh, based on the definitions of the terms in our language, the way we look at things, our terministic screen, so-called. So, all right, uh, once the mind has set itself in order, uh, which is why dreaming sleep is necessary, uh, then we can enter sushupti. Now, sushupti appears like ignorance, and indeed we use it to cover things, like when we concentrate, uh, like when we're reading that book, you know, and dreaming about the characters and all. What are we doing? We're shutting out the people walking by and traffic noise and, you know, whatever is going on in the background, isn't it? How do we do that? By covering it with sushupti, you see? So all the states of consciousness are available and actually in use by us all the time. But we just don't think in these categories. That's why we don't recognize it. So, all right, then... When we enter sushupti during sleep, the senses become covered by ignorance. And only a, a small thread is left, excuse me, um, just in case anything happens in the environment. A sound, a sudden light, or something, a movement in our immediate environment will wake us right up even out of deep sleep. Because the mind is always listening for threats. That's its job. That's what it does. But anyway, during deep sleep, there is apparently nothing. Apparently. Because what deep sleep, what Sushupti really is, is Shiva. See, the uh, waking consciousness is like Brahma, governed by the mode of passion. And dreaming is like Vishnu, governed by the mode of goodness, sattva, right? And nobody ever did anything bad while they were sleeping, right? <laughs> Young rascals, after all their mischief during the day, finally settled down for their nap, and ah, oh, don't they look like little angels? <laughs> because they're sleeping. That means the mode of passion is quiescent. There's no action, there's no doing, there's no ego. There's no ego in dreams. Uh, if, if you develop an ego during a dream, you'll wake up. You'll go from Swapna to Jagrat. So, anyway, there's no ego for sure in Sushupti. There's no, no anything, no nothing, no objects, no perceptions. The Buddha said of this state is neither perception nor non-perception. It's non-perception because 
You don't see any objects. But it is perception because you are seeing nothing. <laughs> you see? It's perception you're seeing, but what you're seeing is the absence of everything. This is Sushupti. And Sushupti is a tremendously powerful causative state. This is identified with Shiva. If waking is Brahma, if dreaming is Vishnu, then deep sleep is Shiva. And Turiya is Brahman. See? So all of our psychology, medicine, uh, personal development, uh, uh, any kind of wellness, you know, the holistic wellness or anything, uh, always looks at sleep. In fact, just today came up on my iPhone uh, where you can put alarms in your sleep schedule according to their health optimization app, which I never use. I just do yoga every day. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so it's become a mainstream thing now to manage your sleep. Make sure you get the right amount of sleep and the right quality of sleep. So even the eye watch now is, or whatever they call it, is uh, monitoring your sleep. So sleep is an important part of wellness because these are the deep states of consciousness in which we align everything with our higher self and our karma and cause and effect and you know, if you go back, uh, way back to the beginning on our series on integrity, on our series of being in the world and um, being integrity is the name of the next part, uh, we talk about the court of justice or the court of truth in the hall of silence in which the self, Brahman, is the judge, and death is the bailiff, right? And the, the friend, the guru, uh, is the uh, advocate. And you have to know how to approach this place in yourself where everything is judged according to the standard of Brahman, according to the standard of truth, satyam, and eternity. Because this is where everything is set up. This is actually where all the action is, you know, in life. This is where the decisions are made, you know, what's going to happen in your life. So when you bring your dreams, having been aligned with everything else that you know and feel and believe, and you bring them silently into the chamber of the court of truth, huh? which is it's like a, a Shiva Lingam deep in the heart on the right side, for those of you who are into meditation. Um, this is the place where you decide then what your being is going to be, what your becoming is going to be, and whether you're going to stay in this world and continue to engage in sense activities or whether you're going to go to the subtle world, the extensive subtle worlds of many different flavors according to your specific relationship with God in whatever form, uh, or whether you're going actually to liberation, to identification with Brahman, See, and leaving the sphere of activities altogether, uh, subtle or gross. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is God GPT, and, and this is how you approach God GPT. And uh, I wish you all the best in using this spiritual technology, uh, which, remember, is just a metaphor. It's not the truth. It's not you know, literally what is happening. But it's a metaphor 
that helps us grasp what's happening, even though it's like far beyond the normal human intellect or even the human genius intellect. It's like inconceivable, right? The reality is inconceivable. So we have to make a metaphor, a model, you know, that allows us to, to grasp it somehow or other so that we can align ourselves to this reality and, you know, get the highest advantage, which is complete enlightenment and liberation. So all the best to you. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.